Distinguished fellow in government studies at the Heritage Foundation, former congressman from Oklahoma's 5th District, heritage.org. Of course, the uh, the Heritage Foundation site and istook.com is your website. Uh, distinguished fellow, um, uh, working on the Jolly Good Fellow? <laughs> That's the goal. Okay. Good, good on you. Uh, also, Twitter at uh, Ernest underscore Istook and uh, at Heritage, of course. Uh, Mitt Romney yesterday laid out a jobs plan in his speech. I watched the speech. In fact, I have a transcript of it here. And it seemed to me like he was basically saying he was going to do the exact same thing that George W. Bush did, uh, drop taxes, cut regulations. And how did that create any jobs? I don't, I'm missing something here. Well, if you go back to the uh, lowering things like capital gains tax rates during the Bush administration, it most definitely did uh, create jobs. I mean, uh, I, I recommend to people, if you uh, want to see something fascinating, find the speech that John F. Kennedy made as president when he was sponsoring lowering of tax rates and extolled the philosophy of how that does indeed help the economy. So, uh, yes, I, I know that some people want to have a mythology saying that lowering taxes does not stimulate the economy, uh, but I can tell you, I do not subscribe to that myth. So during... When people have incentives to do more, they produce more. So during the period from, uh, from the 1930s until the 1980s, early 80s, when the top tax rates were 70, 74 to 91%, um, people were not keeping their money in their businesses. They were not starting businesses. They were not growing. I mean, that was the time, uh, that was the, th those three decades were the only time we ever had consistent decade to decade GDP growth over, sure. over 3%, the, was the, when the we had a top tax rate. Like the tax code was filled with loopholes so that the, it was a fiction, uh, the notion that most people were paying that rate because it was filled with so many loopholes with giving people ways to uh, evade that. And it's better to have fewer loopholes and lower tax rates uh, because, you know, some people talk only in terms of uh, they equate tax increases with revenue increases. And that doesn't necessarily follow. They're not the same sure, thing. You're, you're absolutely right. And in if fact, you, find, you know, you take a smaller percent of the pie, you can bake a bigger pie. Yeah. And, and since you mentioned John, John Kennedy and, and his, his position on this, um, I think, you know, he, he, in fact, he ended this with a plea of, I want to be on the record for this. Um, he starts out, this is, this is the speech that you're talking about. And, and it's, it's from the Nixon Kennedy debates. And he no, says. I'm talking about a national broadcast he made as president, not during the debates. Okay, with Nixon. well, they, they were essentially the same thing. They, they, this was the, okay. the, the same thing. And he said he wants to make tax changes that would actually generate more revenue, not through some kind of supply side magic, but by closing loopholes, and that he would use the, 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 that extra money to spend it. Here's, here's what he had to say. This is Jack Kennedy. Yes, I have stated in both the debates and state again that I believe in a balanced budget and have supported that concept during my 14 years in the Congress. The only two times when an unbalanced budget is warranted would be during a serious recession, and we had that in 58 in an unbalanced budget of $12 billion, or a national emergency where there should be large expenditures for national defense, which we had in World War II and uh, during part of the Korean War. Okay, so then he says he wants his tax changes, which is really where we should have started this clip. Yeah, and I'm talking about uh, the speech that he gave in no, November. It, let, it, let me, let me, I'm, I'm, as president. Yeah, that was, that was the setup. I, I really, I really, sh I shouldn't have wasted your time with that part of it. But here's the, here's where he continues, if I may. This is just a few minutes. Third, it's not I even think a minute. it's possible to gain a $700 million to a $1 billion through tax changes, which I believe would close up loopholes on dividend withholding on expense accounts. And then he talks about how he's going to use so that. In my money. judgment, we would spend more money in this administration on aid to education. We'd spend more money on housing. We'd spend more money, and I hope more wisely, on defense than this administration has done. But I believe that the next administration should work for a balanced budget, and that would be my intention. Mr. Nixon misstates my figures constantly, which uh, is, of course, is right. But the fact of the matter is, here is where I stand. And I just want to have it on the public record. And people are still misstating it when he actually didn't live to see that happen. It was Nixon who did it, as you know, or LBJ well, who did it, as you know, yeah, in '64. 
But, I, I don't have it with me, and I don't have the ability to play it for you, but I'm talking about the speech he gave as president in November of 1961, where he called for boosting the economy explicitly by lowering the tax rates and how that would help more people to be employed because there would be more incentives for businesses to plow money back into their businesses rather than hand the money over to Uncle Sam. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I, uh, there was, in, back in the 70s, I was running a business, uh, in Michigan, and we were doing very well. Thank you very much. And I, you. I hit a yeah, and and it, we, it, we've, Louise and I have had several over the years, and and I hit a point where my CPA sat down with me, and he said, you know, your tax rate right now, your income tax rate is running over forty percent. Um, you really will probably in the long run make more money if instead of taking this out as pay, you keep it in the business because I owned a little over fifty percent of the stock in the company. So if you keep it in the business and, you know, put it into advertising, marketing, grow the business. And we did. We, we went from, at that time, 14 employees to 18 employees and grew the business. And, and had the taxes been lowered, I would have taken that money out and put, put it in the stock market or put it in a Swiss bank account. I don't see why yeah. taxes, I mean, you know, from my own personal experience, when tax rates were high, I kept money in my business. And when tax rates were low... You know, I sold a business because the tax rates were, were uh, capital gains rates were dropping. I mean, I well, don't see how that helps help, helps the economy. I don't get it. Well, yeah, to, to, to say that higher rates encourage businesses uh, to hire more people, of, uh, you know, I understand your example there. But right now, when businessmen, small businessmen in particular, are told that uh, the more you earn, if you plow it back in business in a down economy, you don't necessarily reap the benefit. Now. I realize that you could lift a lot of things if you gave people some, some proper signals where you change the entire attitude of people toward this. But when President Obama is consistently defending higher regulations, with the exception of the announcement he made last Friday, when he's consistently defending those, when he's consistently saying, well, if I can't raise taxes now, I will plan on raising them in January of 2013. When, you know, you have all these different sledgehammers, one after the other, coming out of the federal government, you look at the passage of Obamacare and the huge uncertainty that it created, all the businesses that say that is creating uh, so much uncertainty that I don't feel that I can expand as well as the additional cost. You know, every business that I've... studies that are out there on it. Every... Howard Feynman last weekend was saying the biggest mistake that Obama made was pushing through Obamacare. That's Howard Feynman, for goodness sakes. Every business that I've ever started was based on total uncertainty. I don't know any entrepreneur who hasn't. When you go into business, it is uncertain. Uncertainty yeah. isn't what business people want. What, what, pe what people want are customers. They want people to have money in their pockets to buy their goods. And, and again, but if the, if the folks that are running the show in Washington, uh, the president in particular, it's not just uncertainty. I mean, I realize there's a risk factor in business. You're exactly right about that, Tom. But this type of uncertainty is somebody standing behind you with a sledgehammer telling you they are going to whack you. Well, you're going you you're gonna, to uh, whack you how? Just uncertainty. You're talking about like when Bill Clinton raised income tax rates by 3%? The, the, believe me, President Obama is not only talking about the tax rates. We've had, uh, within his tenure already, we've had $40 billion a year in regulatory increases with 75 major regulations yeah. passed. And, and I would President argue that those Obama's actually... Releasing a list of seven uh, multi-billion well, dollar regulations. Of, okay, we're, we're out of time. I'll, you, I'll give you, leave you the last word. Ernest S. Took Heritage.org. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Tom. Good talking with you. This is the Tom Hartman Program.